What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to talk about why these top companies are moving to a low code, no code paradigm to create more speed and agility in their business. I'm going to show you how startups have strategically chosen this model to reduce development overhead and accelerate the pace of innovation. So if you're technical and thinking this doesn't apply to you, I'd urge you to think again. We're going to talk about how this is going to affect job security for developers like you and I. By the end of this video, you will understand exactly how this disruptive new trend will affect developers just like you. Let's get started. As a quick aside, if you're using this approach at your company or even independently and you have a good example, could you please leave it in the comments? That will be super helpful. So what exactly is low code, no code? The idea behind this approach is to outsource any aspect of your project that can be taken care of by some off the shelf solution. Communities have sprung up that focus on this approach such as makerpad co if you go to their site you will see a bunch of different products and startups that cater to this methodology tools like Airtable or Zapier or Google Sheets which can be extended by a custom code so how exactly are companies using this I want to focus on two different companies that follow the same model that is snapchat and Pokemon go the virality of these products and what I mean by that is their ability to scale rapidly was unprecedented up to the point that they actually achieved that. And the reason is because historically, a startup would have what was called a DevOps team. The responsibility and role of the DevOps team is to manage servers and resources to support the growth of the application. Now this is incredibly technical work, and what that means is it's often hard to do and oftentimes companies will have growing pains in trying to do this. What Snapchat and Pokemon Go did that was differently was they outsourced their entire DevOps team. In fact, Snapchat does not have a DevOps team. Instead, they have Google. Google has been able to create products that Snapchat can hook into that allow the rapid growth and auto scaling capabilities that they needed in order to support that viral growth that they were experiencing. And this synergy between Google off the shelf solutions and Snapchat's native unique offering put together was able to facilitate the rapid growth and smooth scaling of those applications. I want to provide one more really good illustration on the startup side of things. So this company is based out of Boston and the overarching premise of their startup is they want to create tailored customized fashion recommendations. And they initially envisioned creating three applications, a web, an Android, and an iOS application. So in order to build those three applications, this would have cost them north of six figures for just the first iteration of their product. Eric Ries wrote a book called The Lean Startup, which talks about gathering data in lieu of investing too prematurely into product development. So what this company did that was super smart was they thought to themselves, how could we get at an MVP and begin gathering that initial data without going out and building some new project? And they fully adopted the low code, no code methodology. And if you look at their website, the way they structured their MVP was through SMS. So instead of having an app that users needed to download, they just had a, a chat bot that would message users directly over SMS. And it would message them the product recommendations. And they were able to create an interface based on the iMessage liking, thumbs up, thumbs down, hearting feedback to determine if users liked the products. On the back end, they're using Airtable as an ad hoc database. And then they're using the Twilio API to interface with users. And then for their product inventory database, they're hooking up BigQuery with the Rakuten inventory API. This is a stellar use of low code, no code. They have an 80-20 solution to their MVP. They're able to gather initial data and they're able to get everything they need that they would need to present to venture capitalists to then raise money. And they were able to circumvent the huge development overhead that would have come along with building out native code. 
And I would even go as far as to say that this product might even be superior to a standalone application because of the friction of having to download an application. Everyone has SMS. So this is a super clever use of no code, low code, and this model is going to win. Smart, savvy startup founders are going to figure out what off the shelf solutions they can leverage and how can they minimize the technical footprint of their application. They're going to be looking at what is the least amount of code required to support their initial MVP. So here's the big question. How does this affect the typical developer like you and I? And I think the answer to that is twofold. The first answer is about go to market with products. We are no longer in a place where we can afford to reinvent the wheel. We are gonna to have to use off-the-shelf solutions to support the non-unique aspects of our application. So if I'm building a startup application, I should be thinking about how do I outsource and how do I string together these solutions to support the premise behind my idea. Sure, there's still gonna be net new code that is part of our intellectual property, but it's gonna be narrowly confined. And number two, I believe this is going to shift the nature of a lot of development work. It's going to be less about writing bespoke functions and code, and it's going to be more about connecting tools. API work is going to become more critical to these businesses because to make this approach work, it's about connection. It's about getting disparate tools to work in unison. And for the record, I don't believe this poses any threat to development work. It simply shifts the nature of that work. Just like any innovation in the past, you have to remember that in the 1800s we were all farmers on a field and someone came up with an agricultural machine that gave us more time to work on different projects. This is the nature of innovation. So if you found this video useful, hit that like button and stick around and check out some other content. Thanks for listening.